everyone. Oh, my phone is going off. Um, hi, <laughs> happy Wednesday. Sorry, my camera's down a little bit low. Um, I don't, I'm not going to bother with it. <laughs> it's at the top of my head chopped off. Okay, so um, today, clearly looking good. I'm in scrubs. Um, that's fine. Although I'm wearing my new pants that you're going to see on, you've already seen. You saw them on Friday. They're my new um, tinsel tool pants. I love them so much um, with just an old um, t-shirt that I had in my, in my, um, drawer only because I, yeah, I was just throwing on clothes today. Okay. So I've just finished my Monroe turtleneck in this rib net. I decided to go ahead and go for it. Oh my gosh. I really love it. Now I definitely think that this would be, cause it is super boxy, but because this is such a drapey rayon knit, it works. Um, I could definitely see anything that was not nearly as drapey would make me look like a tent. Um, and I also shortened this like four inches when all was said and done. I think I shortened it two inches from the get-go and then um, I tried it on before I did my hem and ended up taking another two inches off and then I put in a one inch hem. Um, anyway, I really like it though. I think this is gonna be, this is gonna hit tick the boxes for an oversized turtleneck. Now I have gone ahead and purchased the um, toaster sweater uh, because I think that will be a good pattern, um, the, the dual one. So it's the toaster sweater one and two. Um, I've got, I bought the, the bundle pattern that has both of those in there. It was like a dollar more to buy the pattern that had two or something like that. Like it's $14 for each individually or 15 for both, something like that. <laughs> anyway, so I went ahead and bought that bundle, but I think that'll be a good one for both my daughter and myself. Um, I think we can both probably get a use out of both versions of that. So I have purchased that and I've got my eye on actually some sweat, sweatshirt fleece from, um, uh, style maker fabrics. In fact, it's the same fleece that I made my um, coat again out of that you saw on Friday, but they have it in chocolate brown too. I think that would make a fantastic little sweatshirt slash sweater. Um, maybe the raglan one, the more fitted one. Um, and then there's some other of their sweater nets that I think would be pretty for like the cowley kind of neck one. Um, it's a little bit boxier that I think might work with just a little bit more drape in it. So anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of the new style maker fabrics I've got my eye on. So I did. I just finished this. Very pleased with it. So I'm glad that worked out. Um, so next I'm going to go ahead and this is my um, shirt. I've got my buttons and my shirt. Uh, the classic shirt by Liesl & Co. I've marked my buttonholes here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my buttons and buttonholes on just to get that done. My daughter is at her tutor right now. Um, for math. <laughs> I've hired a high school student to tutor her in geometry and it is saving us all. Um, and then finally I wanted to show you, so a new to me pattern company reached out to me. This is uh, the Pattern Preacher and offered me a free, um, asked if she could gift me one of her patterns from her line. She has quite a few different patterns um, for me to review on the um, vlog um, or on the channel. And I said yes because she has some really cute things and I'm trying to think. She's got probably I don't know, maybe six or seven, maybe more patterns already. Maybe about that, five, six, something like that. Patterns, um, but I have picked the Olivia dress, which there is the picture. And then here is the line drawing on the back. This is, it's a sheared um, waistband, but real flowy. And I thought that, I mean, it's definitely could be a summer dress, but I thought in the right fabric, it could be a good transition for fall dress. And so I'm gonna use my, um, that rayon poplin that I got, that I thrifted. Uh, that I got um, from Goodwill not that long ago. I think I have just enough. So um, if it's wide enough, because this takes 60 inch wide, we'll have to see. Hopefully I have enough. Um, if not, I've got other rounds I can pull out of my stash to make the dress. But um, yeah, I'm really hoping it works with this because I think this will be very pretty. Um, or it gives me an excuse to buy some new round. <laughs> Again, Style Maker Fabrics has some beautiful stuff right now. Crushing after all of it. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be, I think this is going to be next Friday's video. So I do need to get this made up at some point. Um, my parents are coming into town next week, so I will have, um, not as many sewing days as normal because they're coming in for a long weekend, Thursday through Monday, um, to visit. We haven't seen them since July, so that's going to be very nice. Anyway, that's what I've been up to so far this morning. Um, did I already say it's Wednesday? I think so. I normally put that at the bottom. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get these buttons sewn on and um, buttonholes and buttons put on so that shirt can be done and then all three of my tops will be finished for, for my module so I can get those filmed. Um, I mean, I could do it on Monday, I guess, because my kids will be in school because that's going to be Tuesday's video. But I need to go ahead and get started on my bottoms 
um, for the module as well because since my parents will be here um, I need to get things like kind of done and out of the way at least sewn I can film that the Monday because I'll leave in the morning on that Monday um, so I can I can film then but I do need to get those two bottoms made up so that is on my agenda for today so um, and then I'm also just waiting for my daughter to holler that she needs to be picked up so that is um, yeah what I'm gonna be up to so um, I will I don't know, it's kind of dark over there. I may not take you with me while I put on my buttons and buttonholes. It's not really that exciting. <laughs> um, but if I do any other sewing, that may be all the sewing I do today. I'm thinking. Possibly. Because uh, when my daughter gets back from tutoring, she still has a lot of homework to do, and both my kids still have to work on science. Like, I've got some teaching things I think I've got to be um, kind of on point for. Uh, and I promised my son I'd take a long walk with him today, too. So... That's what I've got going on today. Um, so yeah, I'll take you around with me if I do do any sewing, but if not, then I'll probably just pop on to show you what I've done and then um, just to kind of check in again. Okay, sounds good, bye. <laughs> Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Um, so I didn't come back on yesterday, <laughs> obviously. Um, I did, however, finish my, all three of my tops are done for my module. So I got the buttons and the buttonholes um, all put onto my shirt. It looks fantastic. I really love that pattern. Um, it's a little bit, it's a looser shirt, so it's more of like a relaxed button-up shirt, which I think is, is great. I love the, having that in my wardrobe, especially in just a very dark neutral for myself. Um, but I would like to look to see if I could find a more fitted button-up shirt as well for those occasions. So I'm not sure. I have my Bond shirt um, from Itch to Stitch that's that ivory colored silk one. I love the way that fits and that's a little more fitted. Um, but it doesn't have a, a collar on it. It's just got, it has the collar band, like a banded collar instead of the fold over collar, which I love um, on me, but I would also like a collar pattern as well. So Itch to Stitch also has the um, Mila pattern that is like a, just a placketed shirt, but it has a collar. And then they also have the Montana shirt that is a button up shirt. Um, it has a tie version and then just like more of a straight hem version, um, which I own. I'm pretty sure I own that one already, the Montana. I don't think I own the Mila. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm interested in trying that. And then um, Liesl & Co. also has a recital shirt, which I need to look at it a little bit more closely because the classic shirt that I just made up was Liesl & Co. I do want to change the side seam just a wee bit just so I can finish off the hem the way I want to finish it off. Because um, she just has, like, the side seam just goes right into the curve of the hem instead of, like, cutting coming out a little bit for the seam allowance. And I prefer that so that it, there's a stopping point and then I can do my hem. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's just personal preference because then you have to cut into the seam allowances and stuff and I don't like doing that. Um, very simple change to make on that pattern. That's the only thing I didn't like about that pattern. Um, but she has a recital shirt that I think might be a little bit more fitted, so I'm going to look into that too. Um, I would like to make a couple more button-up shirts. Um, I would like to make a blue one, like a Oxford blue, Oxford, Oxford, Oxford colored blue, you know, like a pale blue, um, to wear underneath some of my knitted sweaters that I showed you guys last week. Um, and I would also like maybe a couple of patterned ones just to mix things up a little bit. So anyway, that's kind of, I'm gonna look, I'll let you know what I decide, what I look into, um, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking about that. So today, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my bottoms, because like I mentioned, my parents are coming into town. We'll see, you're watch, you'll watch this on Wednesday, they come in the next day, thir that Thursday, the 1st of October. So um, I do need to get ahead of things now, um, so that I can fully enjoy the long weekend with them. Uh, so I've got my Fior skirt cut out mostly. I'm fully lining it um, because it, I'm using a wool crepe and it will be itchy. Um, but it has a button placket, so I'm going to be doing it very similarly to the way that I did my um, um, button-up shirt dress, not shirt dress, button-up dress that I made where I lined the bodice that had a button placket, basically doing it the same way. So that's what, although I just realized I didn't cut off the excess there on that button placket on my lining. That's easy to do. <laughs> but I'm waiting. I didn't have enough. Um, I've got some silk that is silk that's not necessarily in my color palette. 
um, that I've been, one of them I used to line my Hollywood trousers and I had enough left to line the front of my skirt and my pockets. So I wanted silk in my pockets just to give them a little more heft because the silk or the um, wool crepe is a little thinner. Um, and then I also, then I have another silk that I had just a little bit left um, that is in the wash right now that I'm gonna line the back of the skirt with. <laughs> so we're gonna use two different linings. They're both China silk, so it should be fine. Um, and they both have very subtle patterns. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to patchwork that together. But having silk against my body is going to feel much nicer than having the wool against my body. And it'll just give a little bit more heft to the skirt um, in general. So I'm going to um, start doing what I can on the skirt um, while I'm waiting for the last piece of silk to come out of the dryer. Um, I dry my silk uh, the first go round from here on out. It'll just get hand washed, but well, the whole skirt will just get hand washed because it's a wool skirt. So, um, yeah, so while I'm waiting for that to finish washing and drying, um, I'll go ahead and do what I can. So I'm just going to time lapse you guys while I'm working on it. I have everything threaded. Oh, no, I don't. I have almost have everything threaded. <laughs> I'm going to turn the TV on and we're going to sew a skirt. Okay. Okay. My battery died. You guys just got to see a little bit of, of time lapsing and I was concentrating because I actually lined the skirt. Um, so I didn't realize it till too late. Okay, so my fjord is done. Yay! This fabric's a little drapey probably for these big pockets, but I, I don't know, I kind of like it. Um, so I had these buttons in my stash. It's also super wrinkly because <laughs> I've had it all balled up. But I've had these really cool buttons in my stash um, that I used. It still has not been hemmed. I'm going to let it, because um, the, the panels, well, well, panels, I guess, two fronts and there's two backs. Um, there's a little bit of bias at the bottom. It's a, a flared skirt, so I am going to let it hang for a little bit before I um, hem this. But I did go ahead. I actually just surged the hem of the lining um, because I wanted it to be, the crepe's kind of thin, and I didn't want there to be any, I don't want to be able to see anything through it. So I just surged the hem of um, the lining. And it's all sewn into the button placket. But then, you know, if the hem of the lining drops a little bit, it's not, I mean, who cares? <laughs> it can get wonky if it wants to. But I do want the skirt, obviously, to be nice and straight. So I'm going to let it drop before I hem it. Um, I actually cut, um, sorry, just got a text on my watch. I actually cut the regular skirt on the um, below the knee length for the skirt, which actually comes like mid-calf on me because I think, I think closet core patterns are like 5'6", maybe. They're drafted for 5'6", um, but I wanted a midi length, so I didn't adjust the length at all. I made a size 12. I'll talk about this more, obviously, in my video. Um, and then I cut the uh, lining, the silk lining, um, at the above the knee line. So there's a quite a bit of difference between the two. But actually, I mean, look, this is already falling because, look, you can tell at the sides um, there's not as much skirt as there is at center front showing. And the same at center back. <laughs> so yeah, so the silk did drop, but again, I don't really care because um, I'm going to do just a little baby narrow hem on this skirt anyway, so there'll still be plenty of um, the lining of the skirt won't peek out. So there we have it. And there's two different silks that I used for the lining because I didn't have enough of either. Um, but oh my gosh, it feels so good on. So I'm very excited about this. Again, it is very wrinkly, so it needs a good steaming, but um, I think this is going to go so well into my wardrobe. I'm very excited. Um, yeah, so there's that. All done. Uh, so I do need to, um, I actually, I got on and bought the Chandler pants uh, pattern and noticed she had just done a blog post on how, there's a faux fly on that pants pattern, but she did a blog post on how to make it a functioning fly. So there is elastic on the back, so you can pull them off without putting in a real fly. But if you wanted the real fly just for, um, make them look more like a, a regular pair of trousers, um, there are instructions on how to do that. And I think I'm going to do that. I mean, why not? Um, I think you have to alter, there's three pattern pieces that you have to alter just a little bit. Um, so the front waistband gets cut in two pieces as opposed to on the fold because it, obviously it's going to be a right and a left hand side instead of just the one continuous piece across the top. Um, 
but yeah, I need to, that one's drafted for someone that's 5'8", so I'm probably going to have to take quite a bit of length out of those pants. Um, but I have it all printed off, I just need to tape it together. Uh, my daughter has a golf match tonight. So, um, I don't know, here in a couple of hours, you know, she'll be getting off the bus and we've got to book it over to this golf course that's like, I don't know, 25 minutes away probably. Um, and I'm going to walk with her for that. It's a short, um, like a par 3 course, kind of. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to walk the nine holes with her because we're allowed to. Um, and I'm wondering if we're going to have to wear masks. Hmm, I probably ought to take one just in case. We might have to. Um, anyway, we've got that this evening, and then um, that's kind of the craziness for tonight. So it's a little less, because she has the match, she isn't able to go to art tonight. And um, she actually had life group tonight, because it's on, not on its regular night right now, but she can't go to that either because of um, the match. So that actually helps a little bit. <laughs> we've just had to eliminate a couple of things just because of that. Um, but anyway, that is our tonight, and then this weekend, I, you probably won't see me again until maybe on Sunday, because, um, tomorrow evening, my son is having a couple friends over for, um, a birthday get-together. My kid's birthday is next week, so he's having a couple friends over tomorrow just to play, you know, they're just gonna hang out in the backyard, um, I'm gonna make some cupcakes and we'll order pizza, and they're going to just, yeah, just kind of hang out, probably wander down to, we have a green space in our neighborhood, shared green space um, to play soccer or something is my guess. And then Saturday night, my daughter is doing the same thing with a couple of her friends. Um, so very small gatherings. I think my son's having three friends over and my daughter's having five over. So, you know, just very small. Um, maybe make a fire in our fire pit outside. They're all going to stay outside and just kind of hang out for a couple hours and um, just, yeah, celebrate a little bit with their friends, because again, my parents are coming next week because of my kid's birthday, <laughs> and to help celebrate that, and, um, yeah, and their birthday next week happens to fall on an at-home day, a virtual day, and it's their easier one, it's their blue day, so, um, we should be able to kind of celebrate it a little bit more than normal when you have a birthday in the middle of the week, so that should be nice, um, but yeah, I need to clean my house up a little bit. I mean, not a lot. There's just, no one's really going to be in the house unless they have to use the bathroom. Um, but I do want to do some cleaning tomorrow. We're going to see how the rib feels. <laughs> Go slowly. Um, and then I have to make cupcakes for him tomorrow. And then I'll make her cupcakes on Saturday before her party. <laughs> That's the problem with twins. You just end up with a lot of cake at the end of the day. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's not fair for them to have just one cake for the two of them. They should each be able, and they both have different tastes. My daughter always picks a strawberry cake with strawberry icing. And my son always picks a chocolate on chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. Um, so, yeah, I let them each pick, pick a cake. And we just end up with a whole lot of cake. A whole lot of cake. <laughs> what I think I'm going to do, though, my daughter has a baking set from when she was younger. And she's got two, like, little bitty cake pans that are probably, I don't know, six inches, maybe, little pans. Um, but they're like little cake pans. And, I mean, they're like legitimate little cake pans. So I'm thinking, because typically with the batter, since I'm making cupcakes, you can get 12 cupcakes and then you can technically probably get like 24 cupcakes out of um, a recipe. But I only want 12 because that's just too many. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do with the extra batter is just make two cakes um, in those little pans and then freeze them so that when my parents are here next weekend when we're celebrating, or I could even put them together for their actual birthday and then we could just eat the leftovers when my parents are here, um, I'm going to make two like little six inch cakes. Um, with that leftover. I'll just wait. I'll just have the um, frosting recipe in half and then use some of it for the cupcakes. And then I'm not a cake, cake decorator like we're talking <laughs> rustic, <laughs> rustic decorating. Um, but then have those little cakes for their actual birthday slash when my parents are here. That's what I'm kind of thinking of doing. It's just so much cake. And I can't eat gluten, so I don't eat any of it. My husband's not eating gluten. He hasn't been for quite a while because he thinks that it makes kind of a difference with him. So it's literally just my kids eating a lot of cake. <laughs> I have more friends over. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so that is, um, I'll be doing birthday stuff all tomorrow and Saturday. 
Um, so yes, I probably won't be down in the sewing room again until Sunday. Um, but then by the time Sunday rolls around, I'll probably be very ready to be back in here. So <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> Um, I wanted to make up that Olivia dress as well, that pattern preacher um, pattern that I was gifted. I want to be able to do that for a video on next Friday. So I need to get that dress made up at some point. But I think I'm going to make the Chandler pants first, and then I'll do the Olivia dress. So that's kind of kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, that's all I've got. I hope you guys have enjoyed the little bit I filmed today, and I will um, see you guys in a couple of days. Okay. Hi everyone, happy Monday. Um, so I'm just now getting on here, obviously. I have been off since, when did I vlog with you guys last? Was it Friday? I don't think it was Friday. I was getting ready for birthday parties Friday, Thursday, I guess. So this may be a little bit of a shorter one. I do have with me, look who's decided to join me. She is not under the desk today. She decided to come join me and she has just been groomed and is feeling very beautiful. She still has her little neckerchief, although we've decided hot pink is not her color. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to make her her own neckerchief but yes Gidget got groomed on Saturday she is feeling and looking and smelling beautiful aren't you yes and actually showing me some love today so we'll take it where I can get it now I've stirred dog hair up everywhere um, so I just finished doing a little bit of filming hence why I've got my lights on um, I was actually filming twirls I filmed a little bit yesterday for Tuesday's video um, Let's see. My kid's birthday is tomorrow, so I'm probably going to end the vlog today because I'm going to, they're at home tomorrow. Um, they're at school today. They're at home tomorrow. Um, and it's a blue day. That's our lighter day. So we're probably going to just be doing um, just kind of whatever they want tomorrow. They'll be doing school, but um, my daughter has to go to the tutor. Um, and they've got other stuff tomorrow evening. But, you know, I'm going to be hanging out with them probably a lot and not doing as much sewing. So on that note, I think I'm going to call the vlog for this week. Um, I'll probably pop on here Wednesday and probably a little bit on Thursday because those are going to be my last two days to get some sewing done before while well, my parents are here. Um, so I've really got to get those Chandlers done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really do need to get the Chandlers done. Um, in addition to the dress that I'm going to have for my um, pattern review on Friday. Ooh, I really do need to get, get to work, don't I? Anyway, I will definitely take you guys along when I do that on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and then it'll probably be, you know, like... I won't check in again until Monday because my parents will be here till Monday. Um, then I'll check back in. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the vlog this week. And um, I am going to do some editing now. And then um, I may trace out this dress pattern that I'm doing for my pattern review. We'll see what I have time for. <laughs> um, yeah, but that really needs to get done. Like bad. So anyway. I will definitely take you guys along with me when I'm doing the sewing. Um, other than that, I hope you guys had a wonderful week with me, and I will see you guys again next week on the vlog. Have a good one. Bye-bye.